ready to make a digital scrapbook page? Well, let's get started. Welcome in friends, this is Amanda with Paper Trail Studio and I'm going to do a tutorial on how to create a scrapbook page using Procreate and one of my new kits. So Procreate is an app you can use on your iPad, it's a one-time fee. And when we get to Procreate, we're going to go to the plus button. If you have some presets set up, that's great, but I'm gonna do one from a new canvas to show you the settings I'm going to choose. So when I get to here, I'm going to change from pixels to inches. I'm sorry about the ring light, hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to do 12 inches by 12 inches in case I print it out in a, to a big album. I want 300 DPI. If you don't have a newer iPad and you don't have a lot of extra space, you might have to lower that. But printing is best in 300 DPI. And if you do have 300 and have an older iPad, you have limited layers. So that's how you can tell. So you'll just have to be very careful with your layers. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna hit create. And I'm gonna to go to Dropbox to show you what we're working with. I'm gonna make this window bigger. So we are going to use the kit Sweet Bunny. And let me see if I can make that full size. There we go. And this is currently in my Etsy store, so check the links below. Here are some sample pages. You can see what has been created before. Here are some elements that are in the kit. There's some bunnies and flowers, mostly. And then here's the full kit. There's 71 different elements and 24 papers. And there are the papers. I'm going to use one of these images, probably this one. This is a public domain image from Unsplash for demonstration purposes today. And I have my Dropbox pulled up with my kit all ready to go. So I have my papers in this set and then in my other folders, my elements. All right, I'm gonna shrink this down so it's easier to use. I'm gonna try to anyways, not that one. <laughs> there, we go. now let's go this way. I like to keep mine on the right side, just handy. And then I pull up Procreate separately. So here's our 12 by 12 canvas, just like in paper scrapbooking. Here's our 12 by 12 base that we would start with. All right, so let's get started. This is the layers panel and our background color is currently white. You could do that um, um, transparent if you want, but we're gonna cover it up pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and grab some paper. I'm gonna start with the pattern on the bottom. Let's see if we're gonna find one. Let me go a little bit bigger so you can see all the papers. So we have lots of different patterned ones. I think we'll use the flowered one today. Let's use that flower and then we'll put some plain cardstock on top. So you have to be in, if you're using Dropbox, you have to have the all of them pulled up in the folder, not open by itself. So I think it was that one. And when you drag it over and drop it, it takes just a couple seconds if it's a larger file, like the paper is pretty big. And then you can click off of the selection tool and it's filled the page, so that's good. Let's add a paper on top, so a plain cardstock. Let's do the green. I think that would look pretty good since there's a boy and a girl in our picture. I'm going to keep it selected and you could layer your papers any way you would want to. Like that's kind of cute. Two fingers to undo. Um, I'm going to make mine full and then just have a border of one page on this side here. And then remember you can pinch in your paper. See, we missed the bottom there. There we go. So I'm gonna just layer it so there's a nice little border of paper. And let's cover that edge up. We could do a drop shadow on that paper, but let's cover it up with lace. 
And then at the end, we'll add all of our drop shadows. If you have an older iPad, you might want to shadow as you go and merge the layers as you go. So I'll show you some of that as we get a little bit further. So I'm gonna change it to 90% and you can see right there, it shows you that you're percent. So if you wanna make it exact, you can check there. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. I wanna see the pattern paper quite a bit. There we go. And then you, once it's selected, you can go off to the side and you can nudge it. So sometimes that's easier than being on it. All right, let's add our picture from Unsplash. Remember, you can crop in your picture and you can change the way your picture looks however you want. I'm gonna leave it, it's pretty nicely cropped as it is because mine was from Unsplash. If you go to the layers panel, you can see our layers being built up. We have the pattern paper, the cardstock, the lace, and the picture. So if you go to the end, you can see the lit the um, settings so you can change any of these right here so you can change it to lighten see how it kind of blends into the paper so I don't like that on this one but if you were to duplicate the picture then you can get into so if we do lighten now or screen that really brightened it up so let's look at that I'm gonna take it off see it went darker put it on it's lighter so I kind of like that but it's a little a little too much for me so I'm just going to bring down the opacity of that top picture 71% looks pretty good let's go off the original on I like that all right so you can play around with all of those layer settings it's kind of fun I'm not a professional photographer so I don't know all the technical aspects but I just play till till I like what I see. We have two frames in this kit. Let's try this one and see if we like it. <clears throat> that looks kind of cute. We also have a blue one, so if we change our mind later, we can switch it up. But I think I like that. It goes with the background pretty well. All right, let's add, I think we need at least a bunny on here. So we have words, some word art. We have some embroidery and string and tags and a staple and ribbons, leaves and leaves that are drawn. Here are some journal cards. We have some silk and paper flowers and then some flowers that were drawn. And then we have some buttons and a clothespin, a butterfly. There's our rabbits, our bunnies, some more flowers, bows, and some little string of pearls or beads. So let's choose a bunny. I'm kind of digging this, this one with the green ear and his fluffy little tail sticking out. So let's add him and see how we like it. We'll shrink him up a little bit. He can sit right there because he's just hiding on the fence that way, right? Okay, and we'll add shadow so he stands out a little better. Let's add some flowers. Trying to decide if I want to go with the drawn ones or the dimensional 3D ones. Let's try the drawn ones first. See how we like that. I'm going to add some behind the frame first. So in my layers panel, I'm going to go underneath the photos. That way it'll place it right there. If we forget, we can always take it and drag it wherever you want. Just click, just tap on it with your pencil or your finger and you can move it wherever you like. All right, so let's start with this green flower. And let's just start building and see what we like. The nice thing about digital is we can change our mind as many times as we want. <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere. Oh, you have to be turn off the selection before you can add more. I always forget that. and layer it up. Don't line it up one on top of the other. It doesn't look as great that way. Let's have, let's see what those other blooms were. Mm, 
Ooh, yeah, yellow one coming out would be good. See, I forgot again. I think that needs to be behind, so in our layers panel, we'll just grab it and move it down. And don't worry, we'll do some shadowing. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna select all the flowers though. Okay, select. Okay, let's see what else we want to do. We need a yellow flower. Let's build some flowers on this side too. that over so we can see what we're doing. And let's add a pink flower. Oh, let's see, I always forget that. And just be careful if you do enlarge it'll you can do a little bit too much will hurt your resolution so just be careful oh don't want that one let's see i think we need some another color let's try the let's try that one so indecisive so you could tell I did not plan this down. I wanted to show you my thought process as we were building. Let's go back to that yellow flower. It doesn't need to stick out as far. And let's bring that pink one over. And then we'll move this guy. Okay. Yeah, let's move this one. Let's try to switch these two places and move the yellow one down. All right, let's add some leaves. I'm going to go behind all the underneath all the flowers. Let's see what we have for some leaves. Let's duplicate it and keep using that guy. Oh, I don't think it duplicated. Oh, I dragged both of them. There we go. Sorry if you hear my garage door. One of my kids just got home. Okay. Let's duplicate that and bring select both of these. Let's duplicate. Bring one down. And duplicate again. And we'll move that. That's the bad part about having your room right above the garage. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> Not liking that white flower now, so let's bring that down. There, that looks better. And that leaf, I think it's that one, there we go. And let's move this guy over too. And the yellow one looks out of place now. <laughs> let's make him smaller. There, that looks better. 
might change my mind again, but we will see. All right, I think we need to add a flower behind the bunny now. Let's add a pink one, I think would be good. I don't think we've used this one yet. Okay, let's move, oops, there we go. We need to move that up right below the bunny. Let's add a bow. Mm -hmm. Feeling yellow. Let's see how that looks. Let's put it in front of the bunny. And play with the size and the placement. That looks pretty good. We can have a little tag with the date sticking off. Move that. And let's put it underneath. Let's try it under the rabbit. Yeah, that looks good. And then we can zoom in and choose one of our brushes. Not that one, obviously, but one that we can write with. And we can put the date on it. So let's do that real quick. Let's see if I can find the one that I like to write with. I should have had that pulled up. So I'm not finding, I must not have loaded the one I like to write with yet on this iPad. Size. And then this is opacity. And here's your color. So if you want it to match something, you can bring that out and choose your color and see your color changes. You can also pick your colors here or have your color palette set up ahead of time. So I'll just put 2024 for now. And I think that's just going to be too light. So two finger tap to undo. And let's pick more of a brown kind of color, but not too yucky. There we go. There, that looks better. You could put the exact date to document what you were doing. Add some journaling on your journaling card. And let's staple this frame down. We don't want it to get away, right? <laughs> let's see how that looks. And let's duplicate that and add it to the other side. Let's go down here. That looks pretty good. We need a, a word art, I think page always looks better with like a title. So we have Bunny Crossing, The Hunt is On, Happy Easter, He is Risen, Oh for Peep's Sake, Excited for Easter, Hello Spring, Extra Cute, Hop Hop Hop, and Spring is Here. I think we're going to go with Extra Cute. And these already have kind of a shadow built in, so bonus. I might move that back over. I'm not sure yet. Let's leave it there and see how we like it. No. Don't like it. Or we could go down here. Yeah, I like that better. Alright, let's build out another piece of 
matches the background too much. Let's try the string. That would look good. This little baker's twine. Just need something to kind of bridge this all together over here. Let's try it that way. And let's move it down. We don't really want it to be the focus. We just want it to be interesting. Tap and drag. See if there's anything else we need to add to this. I'm kind of liking it as is. We could add a card, but I think we have enough going on. And a button. Oh, we could add a little button to the um, tag. That would be cute. Let's do white. We put it on the bow and the tag. And let's move that back up. want it above our bow. I definitely need shadowing. Let's shrink that so it looks a little more realistic. There, that looks pretty good. You could add another little button, a yellow one for dark green. We have a lot of yellow over there. Let's try dark green. Let's see how we like. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I think we are good except our shadows. So I'm going to walk you through some of the shadowing and then I'll probably speed it up after we get a few of them down because it's not too exciting to watch. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start at the bottom. Our paper doesn't really need a shadow because it's covered up by the lace on the edge. So we'll start with our lace. So underneath the lace, I'm going to add another layer. Then I'm going to tap on the lace layer and I'm going to select it so everything that is the lace is selected because we want our shadow to be underneath of it. Let's find a darker brown or almost black color. We don't want it too true black, but dark for our shadow. And then on that blank layer, we're still selected. Do you see the, the lines here? Hopefully you can. Um, if not, I'm sure you will on yours. And we're gonna fill that layer in, okay? So if we get off the layer panel, you can see there's lace and there's shadow, but you can't really see the shadow yet. So when we're on that layer, we're gonna go to the little magic wand, the adjustments, and we're gonna go to Gaussian Blur. Right now it's 0%. So use your pencil or your finger, we're gonna slide it up to maybe like 5%, it's probably a little too much on this one. Bigger things need a little bit more and things that are flatter need less. So let's do 2%, then we're gonna click on our selection tool and we're gonna bump that shadow out. So just nudge it with your pencil. See, that's way too much. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. So let's go back. Remember, you can also go back with two fingers, two fingers. Just do a teeny little nudge. There we go. See how more realistic that looks? All right, let's keep going. So that's our laces done. We could merge those two layers so we know we're done with them if you want. You just take your two fingers on those two layers and pinch together. That's my easiest way. All right, let's add a, another one to our baker's twine. Select it. I added a layer underneath already. I forgot to mention that. Then select on that blank layer. We're gonna fill it. We still have our dark color. Magic Wand, Gaussian Blur, go up a few percent. 
then we're going to do selection tool. You come here so you can see. Nudge it over. And you want to go the same direction for all your shadows because the sun doesn't really change spots, right? So you have to think like what's a realistic shadow. All right, you can merge those together. Oops, I did too many. There we go. So I'll leave that for now. You don't have to merge them, especially if you think you might change your mind. But remember, if you're short on space, you'll want to. I'm going to merge all of these leaves together to save myself some time. I have a blank one underneath. So since my leaves are not at the top of the layers and there's flowers underneath where they do layer on top of each other, that's why I'm able to merge them. I would not merge this pink and white flower with this green flower and then layer them or drop shadow them at the same time because we need the drop shadow to be under where the two flowers meet. Okay. So select those. Then underneath we're going to fill. Magic Wand, Gaussian Blur. Nudge it up. We can go a little more than we've been doing since we're getting more dimensional. Selection Tool. Nudge it out. See all of our leaves now? All right, I'm probably going to speed it up now while I finish these. Remember, the, the photo is under the frame, so it probably does not need a shadow. The word already has kind of a built-in shadow, so I probably won't do that one, but everything else will. All right. I'm going to merge... Let's see the flowers. I'm going to do this yellow one and this yellow one together because they don't touch so I can do the shadows at the same time. Fill, Magic Wand, Gaussian Blur. Move it up to about 4 or 5%. Selection Tool. Nudge it out a little bit more on those. See the uh, yellow? All right, now we have the pink and the green they touch, so they cannot be merged together. So I'm going to move this one up one, but the pink and the blue do not touch, so I can merge those together to save me some time. Select, fill, Gaussian blur, about four or five percent. Selection tool, nudge. There we go. And then we have the green and the pink flowers, so we can merge those together. Select, fill, oops, Gaussian Blur, Selection, Nudge Out. New layer under the frame. Fill, Gaussian Blur, oops, Gaussian Blur, Selection Tool, Nudge it out. Another trick is you can take it and lower the opacity if it's too much. Merge these two together.
don't need much on the staples. Select, fill, Gaussian blur. Lower the opacity. Oops. Alright, let's take a look. Let's go full, full screen. There we go. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Let me know if that, <clears throat> excuse me, that ring light is bothering you. I'm try to do some more of the lighting next time we use the iPad. Tonight I'm going to be on whatnot and selling or actually we're doing a build a junk journal workshop we'll be making the tassel and some other good things to put in our junk journal this is part three tuesday i'll be on whatnot for a live sale and i hope to have another video up to you soon here directly in the widescreen youtube format so hope you enjoy let me know if you did and have a wonderful rest of your weekend bye everyone